yo. Guess I'm gonna wait for some people to get in here before I start. What up, Higgy? Yo, what up? Can I vape while I do this? <laughs> What's up, guys? How can I tell who's logged in? Ah, whatever. What's up, y'all? Cool. What's up? This is different. This is, I've never told my story like this before. This is pretty cool. Now the comments are there. I see the comments. I just can't tell. I, it says nine people live. I just can't tell who's, who's there, but that's cool. <clears throat> so anyways... My name's Rob. I also go by Rival. I'm a hip-hop artist. I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, I'm going to get into my story here in a little bit. Just let some more people get in here. Um, but if you're in search of some good music, recovery-oriented, and or just good old-fashioned hip-hop, um, you can find me at www.rival727.com. Um, I think you can see that. Rival727.com. Um, all my social media is at Rival727. Um, I'm a, definitely a member of 12 step program. And I guess I'll wait about one or two more minutes and then I'll get into my story. I hope, uh, you know, I always pray for at least one person to get um, something out of this. So, out of my experience, strength, and hope. Like I said, I've never shared like this before, and it's uh, it's a little, it's a little different, but it's cool. I'm glad that there's people in here already. What's up, Shonda? Yes, Rival Seven Two Seven. So you can go to Rival Seven Two Seven dot com, um, and anywhere else, it's at Rival Seven Two Seven. So the website that I gave you has all my videos, music, links to everything. So. Thank you for asking. I'm going to try not to focus on the comments when I'm sharing. So if there are any questions, maybe just wait till the end and I'll try to get to them. And, um, you know, Higgy, Higgy suggested I maybe perform a couple songs. So I'm definitely willing to do that as well. Um, so... I think 15 people is probably pretty good. It's probably cool. 17, 18. What up, y'all? I think if we get to 20, we'll we'll probably get going. Hey, what up? What up, Alexis? Yeah, I'm holding. I'm I'm new to this whole Facebook Live thing. I never I don't go live very much, so y'all have to bear with me. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm outside on my back porch because my daughter's sleeping and, and the, the fiance is sleeping. So I'm outside just chilling out in the elements. So it's pretty dope. Thank you, Shonda. Hello, Tiffany, what's up? It's cool because this is like people that I don't normally get to uh, interact with. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, we're going to see. All right, so I guess we'll just start getting to the to the recovery stuff, man. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll speak for as long as my higher power wants me to. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about who I am and how it was and 
what I did and where I'm at now and you know that experience strength and hope so um, good evening so anyways we'll get right into it man my name's Rob I'm an addict um, I'm in a 12-step fellowship um, I was born and raised in st. Petersburg Florida and yeah the comments are kind of throwing me off but anyways um, let, me, let me swipe let me get rid of the comments I'm not trying to be rude y'all I just can't I can't deal with that um, so I was born in st. Petersburg Florida in 1976 I had two two loving parents uh, younger sister and for the most part I feel like I had a pretty pretty um, what's it called pretty normal upbringing and uh, you know the first thing that I can remember was I was loved by my parents you know there was always love um, also the first thing another thing that I remember early early on is that when my parents would drink um, there would be violence cops would be called they would hit each other uh, it was always be you know loud talking loud loudness loudness so I, I associated like drinking as bad um, you know and like I said I had a fairly normal childhood um, but part of my story a lot of my stories you'll see is that um, I moved around a lot as a kid so like when I was five years old my parents divorced separated and um, the first the first time I moved I was five years old and both of my parents are from upstate New York in Rochester and uh, we moved me and my mom and my sister moved to upstate New York and this started my my journey of moving around a lot so to speak so I got up there and you know I, ha I, I started I started school I was the new kid um, and that's that's been like my story in the, in the whole beginning of my life um, moved around a lot in the three years that I lived there um, they my my father moved back they got to back they got back together they tried to always stay together for the kids man and I and I appreciate that they always tried to work it out but it just it just never worked out um, you know and in that time period of being being in Rochester I probably went to like five different schools if memory serves me correctly um, you know and there was there was still bad stuff going on between my mom and my dad with the with the back and forth of them trying to stay together and still it was always if there was drinking involved there was there was a problem um, so fast forward a little bit when I was eight me my mom and my sister again moved to uh, Lawrenceville Georgia that's where her sister lived and once again I'm the new kid never really met a lot of people had a lot of friends um, so I'm, I'm starting over I'm, I'm, I'm eight years old starting a new school new kid again and um, you know it's awkward and you know I lived in Georgia for about four years of my life and you know when I was 12 years old my mom let me back up we, we were going back and forth back from uh, Georgia to Florida going back and forth on holidays you know my dad ended up moving back to St. Pete and we stayed in Georgia and you know every uh, every sorry I, I was looking at the comments again anyways so every holiday we would come back to we would come back to st. Pete go back to Georgia go back to school and all that good stuff um, you know in the time period that I was in Georgia I moved around a lot again um, never really fit in well, always wanted to try to I always wanted to be the cool kid I always wanted to be cool but I just never felt like I was um, so when I was 12 my mom said you know when you're 12 you can go move with, with your dad if you want um, and I don't really think that she wanted me to but she allowed me to do that um, because I really felt like I was missing out on um, the father-son bond and when I was 12 I ended up moving from Georgia back to St. Pete where I was born and where I'm from and once again I move um, I'm, I'm in seventh grade now and um, by that time though um, I was used to being the new kid and I, I knew how to make friends quickly and and at that time I was in the skateboarding and that that allowed me to make friends quickly so you know feels pretty feels pretty like you know normal you know what I mean because I've always been in, in the in a divorced household or whatever um, so what's it called so I'm in seventh grade I'm skateboarding I'm meeting some friends and I'm starting my new life in st. Pete as as the new kid again um, but so from seventh seventh grade eighth grade I started to get you know involved with some people and you know things were good I, I did I did fairly well in school 
Um, fast forward a little bit to uh, 10th grade. I was about, I was 14 years old and I had tried, I tried smoking weed for the first, actually let me back up because I always, I always forget to say this. My first drug that I ever tried besides, um, you know, taking a sip of alcohol or, you know, sneaking a cigarette from the parents was um, butane. Uh, behind the 7-Eleven, I, I huffed butane with my friend and, you know, the whoa, 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 I always, I felt that and, um, like not after not long after that I started smoking weed um, not long after that I tried I tried hallucinogenics um, I started drinking you know and this was in the course of you know the first time I had tried anything um, you know I, I'd slowly progressed into the other stuff and you know that wasn't like I wasn't the kind of kid that that went to school um, and got high or, or you know went to school high it was like weekend warrior type of stuff um you know mind you this whole time like like i told you guys i always wanted to like be a part of or or be with the cool crowd or, or at least feel like i fit in so i i stopped kind of, I, about 10 like after i started trying the drugs and stuff like um i got involved with these other kids that they weren't skateboarding they were causing trouble they were getting high um they were carrying guns they were carrying knives and they were you know getting in trouble and stuff and i and i was attracted to that i thought that was cool um so i started hanging out with those guys i started doing the things that they were doing um you know and i don't really want to say my <laughs> off because of it um but i definitely started acting differently and i really thought that i was being cool um so by hanging out with these kids i started doing all the stuff they were doing and um when i was 16 um, I was the only guy with a car, you know, my, my father owned the auto body shop, um, and he actually taught me my trade. I do that for a living today. Um, but we, I had a 66 Falcon, nice old car. Um, I was the only guy out of the bunch that had a car and that was like another way in for me to be cool was that I had the car they didn't so I could pick them up. I could drive around and be cool because I'm with the cool crowd. Um, so another thing. Uh, not long after all that started happening, I got arrested for my first time. Um, and I will say that, that jail, jail is not a part of my story. Prison is not a part of my story. Uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later. I got arrested, um, for concealed weapons with these guys. And I thought that was, cool. I really, I thought that was cool. Uh, I got arrested for my first time with these guys and I, I didn't say anything. And I, you know, I thought that was the coolest thing. Um, so fast forward, you know, getting, getting, um, into uh sorry i got a thing here um i got arrested all that blah 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 um i went through the rest of high school um hanging out with these guys getting in trouble um causing mischief you know thinking i was cool um senior year came around and you know i always wanted to make make my mom and dad proud and especially my father because i was living with him at the time i really wanted to make him proud and i really wanted to show that i could do good in school um, so my, my whole senior year, I buckled down. I was still hanging out with the same guys, but um, I got honor roll my whole senior year, and I really was like, I was very proud of that. Like, that made me, uh, that made me very proud, and, and it, made, it made my parents proud, too. I graduated high school, um, you know, still doing the weekend warrior thing. It wasn't like uh, an everyday thing, and, you know, I didn't even know what addiction was back then. Um, you know, so fast forward a little bit. I graduate high school. I do one semester of, uh, of, of junior college. And, you know, by this time I'm smoking weed like every day. I'm smoking weed all the time, all the time. I'm working. Uh, that's one thing that, that my, my parents both instilled in me was, was a strong work ethic. And, uh, you know, I, I was raised with values and morals and, and I was taught respect and I was taught honesty and I was taught, um, you know, the stuff that, that we learn in recovery. I was taught that stuff before. Um, so fast forward a little bit after junior college, I'm like, I'm getting high, I'm getting high in class. Uh, well, not in class, but like, you know, getting high in school. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck this, man. I'm going to, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to make money. I don't need to go to school, blah, blah, blah. Um, and not long after that, that I, once I started working for Pops and him teaching me the trade, um, I got involved in the, the, the rave scene because that hit pretty hard in the 90s. I graduated in 94, so like in 95, um, I went to uh, my first rave and I tried my first drug that went with it. 
um, you know, the dancing and the lights and all that. And I was just like, whoa, I have arrived. I'm here. Uh, this is, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. That's how I felt. Um, so needless to say, I kept going back to the, to, to the rave every weekend. That's all I thought about for the, for the whole week. It was like, um, that was the only thing I looked forward to was Saturday night, 3 a.m. at the rave in Tampa. Um, and in that process, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with a different group of people. Um, we're getting fucked up every weekend. So like, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm cool. Uh, so I'm like right where I, where I think I want to be. So going to the clubs and I go and I, and I see this girl and like I see as it was like love at first sight and um could have been the pharmaceuticals I don't know um so I, I I end up getting with this with this girl and you know right away we move in with each other after two months um we're together we're together uh for about two years we stayed in my dad's apartment we moved out uh moved into her mother's house and um we were just, you know, doing the whole thing. I kind of stopped doing drugs, but I, I, I kind of stopped doing the rave scene. But I, I was always smoking weed. She didn't approve. Yada yada yada. We could, we were together for about five years now at this point, and I really, to be honest, I don't think I was really happy. But I thought because we were together for so long that I should probably marry her because that'll probably make things better, right? Right. So we get married. Um, like I said, I was already unhappy before I got married, but I thought that was the right thing to do. Um, I was the kind of guy that, uh, I was a people pleaser. I didn't like getting into altercations. I didn't like that stuff. So like whatever she said went, I just went with it because I was very passive. I didn't feel like dealing with any drama. Um, and in that, and in that, that, that period, I pretty much lost myself, lost who I was as a person and just let her control me. I straight up honest, like. I let her wear the pants and um, I was very unhappy. I was miserable and I felt like I was in like this, this, this marriage prison, so to speak. Um, so fast forward three years after we, we, we got married, that was it. I was done. I was 28 years old. We were together since I was 20. Um, you know, I, I tried some other stuff in between in those eight years, um, but I always was smoking weed because I didn't think it was a drug. That's just what I did. Um, so fast forward, I get... We, we separate, I'm done, and I see, like, the friends that I grew up with, they're on the bigger and better things, they're, you know, they're selling drugs, they're doing drugs, they're going out, they're partying, and I was like, I missed out on so much in eight years, like, I, I really felt like I missed out on a lot, so I got, I got with these guys, I, I separated from her, I stayed on a friend's couch, and I hit the I hit the streets running, man. Like these guys, they were they were doing the stuff, and I wanted to be cool, you know, because that's part of my stories. I just want to be cool. Um, so, so some time passes. Um, I move in with a friend from high school, and I'm I'm in the in crowd again. Um, I'm going out every night. Um, you know, the guy, one of the guys I grew up with, tried to keep me away from from all that stuff, but. Uh, it was just inevitable uh, eventually that I would get into it and I started I started selling drugs um, and like man did I think I was cool man I really thought I, I had the world by the balls I really did um, so I started selling drugs 